As I mentioned previously, the ability of an operating system to run multiple processes, in other words programs in the same time, is called multitasking. There's one big catch to having many programs running simultaneously on a single computer though. Each one is going to need some memory, and we can't lose that program's data when we switch to another program. The solution is to allocate each program its own block of memory. So for example, let's say a computer has 10,000 memory locations in total. Program A might get allocated memory addresses 0 through 999, and program B might get 1000 through 1999 and so on. If a program asks for more memory, the operating system decides if it can grant that request, and if so, what memory block to allocate next. This flexibility is great, but introduces a quirk. It means that program A could end up being allocated non-sequential blocks of memory, in say addresses 0 through 999, and 2000 through 2999. And this is just a simple example. A real program might be allocated dozens of blocks scattered all over memory. As you might imagine, this would get really confusing for programmers to keep track of. Maybe there's a long list of sales data in memory that a program has to total up at the end of the day, but this list is stored across a bunch of different blocks of memory. To hide this complexity, Operating systems virtualize memory locations. With virtual memory, programs can assume their memory always starts at address 0, keeping things simple and consistent. However, the actual physical location in computer memory is hidden and abstracted by the operating system. Let's take our example program B, which has been allocated a block of memory from address 1000 to 1999. As far as program B can tell, this appears to be a block from 0 to 999. The OS and CPU handle the virtual to physical memory remapping automatically. So if program B requests memory location 42, it really ends up reading address 1042. This virtualization of memory addresses is even more useful for program A which in our example has been allocated two blocks of memory that are separated from one another. This two is invisible to program A. As far as it can tell, it's been allocated a continuous block of 2000 addresses. When program A reads memory address 999, that does coincidentally map to physical memory address 999. But if program A reads the very next value in memory, at address 1000, that gets mapped behind the scene to physical memory address 2000. This mechanism allows programs to have flexible memory sizes, called dynamic memory location, that appears to be continuous to them. It simplifies everything, and offers tremendous flexibility to the operating system in running multiple programs simultaneously.